Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Eating While Broke. I'm your host, Colleen Witt, and today we have very special guest actor, comedian, while and now Casanova, uh, <laughs> Bobby J, and rapper yeah. Bobby J Thompson is in the building. Yeah, we in here. What's happening? I'm really excited to have you. Um, as I mentioned, like we've definitely crossed paths in the past, so it's nice to have you. Yeah, it's a pleasure feed to be me. here. I love Let's when guests it. come on the show and then they feed me, but I'm always nervous about what you gonna feed me. Yeah. Um. So why don't you go ahead and tell me what you're about to cook me up? All right, so I'm going to keep it, you know what I mean, real simple, old-fashioned, you know what I mean, a good old bacon sandwich, you know what I'm saying? I've never been a real big egg fan. Like, mm-hmm. I've always, but I've, I like bacon and bread. Like, this has always been my thing, the the meat and the bread, pause. And so, there's no, like, condiments? No. Nope. I've never, because it's like, what do you put on a sandwich, like, ketchup with bacon? No. Hot, hot sauce. Hot sauce. But it just depends on how I'm feeling. Yeah. That was more so before I stopped eating pork. Mm-hmm. So the hot sauce with the pork bacon was like fire. Mm-hmm. Turkey bacon and hot sauce, not so much. But just the bread, the flavor of the turkey bacon, it'd be just enough for me. start cooking it up all right well, and while you cooking it up <laughs> you gotta take me back oh by the way this is electric i know some of some a lot of people are used to cooking on nah we good gas. i know all type of stoves i done been through all types of walks of life <laughs> crock pots hot plates all that yeah and you you started very young in the industry correct yeah yeah, yeah. so i'm curious what the heck was going on when you was eating bacon and bread so what it was is i'm gonna tell you the crazy part about it right so for me I wasn't so much, I wasn't like filthy rich, but I wasn't like flat broke, Mm -hmm. but my mama didn't want me, didn't want money to raise me. So I didn't know that I really, that I was a kid with money, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like I had came from my mama working two jobs sometimes, every man for himself, make it do what it do. Mm -hmm. That was one of my mama's saying, every man for himself at night, I ain't cooking shit, figure it out, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? So with me, like. I've never been big on vegetables, never been big on like, you know what I mean, a lot of different shit. I've always been uh, goddamn meat and potatoes or like, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. meat and bread type of nigga. I'm going to have to tear these in half. Like now, that. are you still like that? You still don't eat a lot of veggies or? No. And my mama tell me all the time, like, boy, you're getting older. You better start eating vegetables or you're going to pay for it. And I'm hard headed. <laughs> hard headed as hell. I am very much hard headed. But sometimes I eat vegetables, especially now. Like I got kids now. So like I got to kind of try to eat vegetables because if I don't, then my son's going to be like, well, daddy, you don't eat vegetables. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, got to try to, you know what I mean, be a good example for the children. But I'm really not a big vegetable fan. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I'm a nigga that's going to eat steak and mashed potatoes and two pieces of broccoli and I feel like that's a good helping for me. <laughs> I just, I don't know why either because vegetables don't taste bad. Mm-hmm. I just don't fucking like them. I don't know why, bro. Like, I'm just, I don't know. I'm a carnivore. I don't want no damn grass. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess vegan's not in your, your forte. Oh, hell no. Not a chance. I could never. I don't, I, I commend the ones that are vegan, but mm-hmm. me, I could never be vegan. Uh, I like burgers and steaks and mm-hmm. chicken wings and shit like that. And I don't think no substitution can taste. I'm not going to lie. At one time in Atlanta, I had some slutty vegan and that burger was damn good. It was really, I've good. always wanted to try their food. It was here. damn good. Uh, it, it, I could taste where it wasn't real ground oh, beef. Oh, that's what I was about to ask. However, you. it wasn't bad. It was yeah. like, it still tastes good as fuck. Like, if somebody would have gave it to me without telling me it was slutty vegan, they probably would have got over on me. Okay. But because of the fact I knew that it was slutty vegan, I feel like my taste buds was looking for the inconsistencies, yeah. the non-ground beef tasting shit. I'll so, tell yeah. you, I, I'm like you in the sense that I like meat, but... Uh, in LA, they do vegan so well that like my guilty pleasure is vegan food. Like if you like, Colleen, what do you want to go eat? I'm like sushi or vegan. I can't get jiggy with sushi. 
I just can't for some why? reason. I don't know why. Come to I'm eat sushi a, with me. I'm just such a nigga, I feel like. like It just doesn't make sense for me to eat sushi. I'm just like, bro, I'm just the nigga. Of but niggas. if you eat sushi with like people in Hollywood, they get the little pieces of fish Yeah, and it never sauce. just no. looks like good. But if I'd you like, come with me, that? if you come with me, just hang with me one time. I like my fish dead and fried I, crispy. I'm telling you, <laughs> I agree with that. But I'm telling you, I order food where it's like I ordered the eel. I always I love smoked eel, so it's not that's really crazy. raw. I've never even I've never even see that's I'm, what I'm I said. Hey, I've never even heard of that. I'm I'm not even trying to beg you, but let me just let me show you I'm how sushi's done one time. We gonna, and, I'm gonna fuck with it. I'm a, I promise. I like you. trying new stuff, but it just it takes it takes someone to be like, come on. I'm, I'm not just I'm gonna be like you, Bobby, you I'm going to try new stuff on my own. Like I'm not like it. I'm not that nigga gonna be riding out the street like you know what sushi restaurant. I'm gonna try it. Like it has I have to be with somebody like nah. Come here, this is what you get. I'm gonna order it for you. Yeah, and like, and, like okay. and we good. You know what I mean? I will definitely, I try. Yeah, okay, I okay. try. You know what I'm saying? Well, so you started in acting. Like, what was your first big thing? Um, my first, I guess. And how old were you? Uh, I was about six years old, I wanna say. My first film was My Baby's Daddy with mm-hmm. uh, Eddie Griffin, Anthony Anderson, and Michael Imperioli. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my first film. I played a. Uh, a kind of small role in it. Uh, I play like Eddie Griffin's baby mama's little brother. Mm-hmm. And what's crazy is for me, like acting was never really in the cards for me. Like I always thought I was gonna be a rapper. Like mm-hmm. I just always, I've always had a love for music. I've always rapped. Like I got my start on the Apollo rapping. So when the acting thing kind of kicked off, it was new to me, but it was fun. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I found, I found fun in it. And I'm like, man, this is something I could do. You know what I mean? So from there I did Tracy Morgan show which was an NBC uh, television show, a sitcom on NBC. And that was probably like my first like big thing where I'm a series regular, I'm in every episode and you know, I'm kind of making my mark in Hollywood, I would say, mm-hmm. because you know what I mean? That was like, yeah, that's where I kind of made my name in. Like people would tell me I, I stole the show. Like that mm-hmm. was like, it was a, it was talks for me to, to do a spinoff on me, but it was like, well, what do we, how do we do a spinoff on a fucking, Five year old, six yeah. or no, six, seven year old mm-hmm. without the parents. Like, yeah. what is he, what what happens? Who does, what do you go live with his grandma? Like, is he a troubled seven year old all of a sudden? Like, so obviously it didn't pan out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, I think that's when I realized, like, I'm good at that shit. Like, yeah. That's but when you, I, so your mom kind of introduced you to it. Or did you come from a single nah, parent household? Or? I, um, I came from a, a single parent household by way of my daddy being incarcerated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But at the same time, my daddy, made his presence felt, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's one thing I always commend my dad for, God rest his soul, like, no matter what, prison, I got Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, calls all the time, all the time. Like, mm-hmm. I never, if nobody told me that my daddy was in jail, I just would've thought like, my daddy's in Kansas City, I'm in Los Angeles chasing this dream right now. Mm-hmm. But I, like, if, if I would've never been told, like, oh, your dad's incarcerated, like, my mom was never really one to hide nothing from me and my little sister. Like, she was very open with telling us I mean, it was everything on a need to know basis for the most part. Like she, she felt like that was something we needed to know, and you know what I mean. This is what's going on, but it's all right. That don't mean your daddy not gonna don't love you, don't want to be in your life. He's yeah. dealing with something right now, and you know what I mean. He'll be there when he can, but you know what I mean. Like I said, my daddy did a, did the best to make his presence felt from prison, and you know what I mean. My mama was amazing. Like she was amazing in everything, being the in home parent, uh, mama and dad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Even though, like I said, my dad wasn't absent; he just was incarcerated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But so I guess I, I could say I had a single parent household, but not really, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because I did have both parents, but yeah, man, like it just was one of them things where it was like my neighbor, I used to, my mom used to work two jobs. So we, she would come home, she'd be tired. Mm-hmm. And obviously I'm a kid with energy. I want to go outside. I want to play. I come from the era of playing outside. We mm-hmm. had no fucking iPads and that Digital, shit. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the, the first, we had the big booty computers when yeah, I was a kid, yeah. like the motherfucker that, <laughs> With the big back on the beige. Well, yeah, yeah the, the beige. Nestle, and you had yeah. to be rich to have one of those. In, in yeah, my brother, we weren't rich. Yeah, my yeah. brother stole the parts and put it together. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Long line of criminal activity mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. Not lying to you. So, yeah. So, um, my neighbors, man. I used to go outside, play with my neighbors all the time, and I would always find myself kind of putting on a show for them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Whether I'm just rapping, I'm just entertaining. I might mm-hmm. be imitating my my local pastor. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's I and from there, like a lady by the name of Cynthia, who was my neighbor, she was like one of the first people to kind of see in me what you know what I mean, what others seen in me later on down the line. Because every day after school, I would be outside with her and her kids and I would just be entertaining the shit out of them. Like, and it's crazy because I was so young, I can't really quite remember everything that I was doing, but I can remember I have 
glimpses of, like I said, me imitating my pastor, me rapping whatever rap songs. Like I said, at this time, I'm nothing but about, I'm not even in school. I'm like coming on from daycare. I'm about four years old, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm not even in preschool yet. So I was advanced, like to know these rap songs and to be able to, you know what I mean, catch on to them and rap them word for word. Like mm -hmm. I was four years old and I knew Lil Wayne, the block is hot from mm -hmm. start to finish. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what no couldn't like for one like nigga how do you even how are you catching on to these words you feel me at four yeah. years old like and Miss Cynthia used to always tell my mama like he's special like you need to get him into something or it's something you need to put him into something he's special but my mama don't see it my mama's working she's resting time, and yeah. working and you know what I mean and her my time with Miss Cynthia is her kind of rest time when mm -hmm. I come in the house it's time for her to prepare dinner get us ready for the next day get her ready for her next work day so she didn't really see it often it wasn't until one day. We was riding in the car and the block is hot came on the radio. And I rapped that motherfucker from start to finish. And my mama looked back and was, she was like, nigga, like surprised, like what the fuck? Like, cause for one, it was crazy because my mama didn't play rap music in her car. Mm -hmm. My mama played strictly gospel music. So one, she was like, where the fuck did you hear this at? Yeah. And how are you hearing it enough to be able to know the shit from and start to finish it, yeah. like that? You know what I'm saying? So it caught her by surprise. And I think from there, that's what she knew, like, okay. What these people are telling me about my son is true. Like he's special. Like she just, you know, he's just a kid with energy. He ain't, you know what I mean? He's just a kid dude, yeah. with energy, and he's, you know what I mean? Y'all entertain because he's not y'all kid. You know yeah. what I mean? So everybody's more entertained by other people's kids than they own. That's just yeah. natural. Especially as a parent now, I get it now. Like my son, dude, I'm like, nigga, you bad. Other mm -hmm. people are like, man, he's hilarious. He's funny. He's smart as hell. And I'm like, man, I do bad. <laughs> so it's it's just a difference. So with that, like after after she seen me or heard me rap that song, she kind of took heed to what people were saying and. It just so happened that the Apollo Theater was holding auditions in my city at the time. Mm -hmm. So they held an audition at our local mall. I won the audition to go represent Kansas City in New York. Mm -hmm. And from there, like I said, it just took off. Like I said, from there it went Tracy, oh, from there it went My Baby's Daddy, Tracy Morgan Show. But like in between, I did all the crazy talk shows, Sally, Ricky Lake, Jenny Jones, like all the talk shows that m motherfuckers my age don't even remember existing. And I wouldn't even remember it existing if I wasn't on them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, it's kind of crazy to be like the nostalgia that like all the things that I've done, like leading up to, you know what I mean? Where I got to and where I am now, like kind of crazy. But it was, it's dope to see like, like my mama actually believed in me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it started with my mama, like, she like, oh no, nah. but when she seen it for herself, she believed in me. My mama had a career as a uh, she was a she was a, a, a RN. She was a registered nurse. Okay. And there's not a there's not no bad job. There's not no, no dead end job yeah. to where it's like that's just a job you throw away to go yeah. chase a pipe dream and move to LA. Like and she, but she did that? She did that. For and, me. And, and how old were you at the time? Um I was were, I was I was about six or seven years old at the time. Crazy. I was young as hell. And the and people where did you told her from? Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. That's a big feat. And yeah, she, hell she, yeah. She packed up. She moved packed here. Up and the, and the and, people told her, if you, if you leave, if, you can't what, come back. What was the conversation between, if you can recollect, like, what was the conversation between you and her at that age? Like, I just she, remember telling my mom, I'm going to make you rich and you don't never have to work no more. At five or six. That's all I remember. And, but that you, was the only thing that was said. And I, like I said, my mama was, still to this day, she's she's deep in church, Christian. She looked, she, 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 she started to say something to me like, boy, and then she caught herself. And, and looked and said, God, I receive it. And from there, you know what I mean? She she took the necessary steps to make that that dream and what that what I said to her, she took the necessary steps to make that a reality. Okay. You know what I mean? So like without my mama like believing and, and really, you know what I mean, giving up what she what she was doing as far as working and you know what I mean, making things happen, like then nothing, nothing goes, nothing shakes for me. Like, like I said, my mama's belief in me and belief in, you know what I mean, the fact that God put an anointing on me at a young age to do something special. And you know what I mean? like I said, I come from a long line of all my mama's sons felons. Like I come from fuck how, ups. So how many <laughs> siblings do you have? I got four brothers and four sisters. And are sisters. you the youngest? I'm the youngest boy. Wait, you got eight? Wait, yeah, they're not all my mama. My mama got five of them though. My mama got four boys with me included and then I got a little sister. So okay. I'm the second to youngest, period. So she I'm moved the entire family? No, because my older, my older brother is 10 years older than me, 12 years older than me, 15 years older than me. Okay. So it's a, it was a large gap. So by the time my career started, one of my brothers was doing a 10 year bid. Mm -hmm. The other two was knee deep in the streets. Okay. And she, it wasn't no, it wasn't no 
reeling them back in at the time. They had made their decisions to be, and like I said, they jumped off the porch young. My brother jumped off the porch 13, 14. Mm -hmm. I said, at 15, my brother caught his first case and got mm -hmm. sentenced to 10 years. So my oldest brother, you know what I mean? So from there. So do you think also in her decision was like she had already She wanted lost. something different. She, she, she was yeah. like, if I want something different, I have to kind of help him see something different because yeah. naturally I'm gonna wanna be like my big brothers, run behind my big brothers. Isn't that kind of similar to what kind of happened with Kevin Hart and his brother? Like, I don't know if you heard, but uh, like one of his older yeah, brothers, older brother and like, the mom was like, I'm not letting not you out you, of my yeah, sight. Yeah, you can't, like, yeah, because of what, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, because of that. And you think that's kind of like what your mom was like, I'm just not going to roll the dice on Bobby. Yeah, absolutely. Point. Like, she she took heed to what was going on, and she said, you know what I mean? I'm gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something different. different, you know what I mean? And show him something different and give him a chance at being something different. Awesome. And I did still fuck up just like my brothers, but those were my own decisions. That wasn't no situation. Like that was me just making dumb decisions down the line when I got older, getting too big for my britches in a sense. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But my mama did everything she could to steer me in a whole different direction. Okay. So then now you, you're doing your acting thing. You you land this big gig at six. Yeah. So now you move before you land the gig, correct? Um. Did we we moved yeah I think I want to say we moved to L A we was like looking for places in L A shortly no I was while we, while I was auditioning that's what when I was auditioning for the Tracy Morgan show we were staying at a little motel called the Night Inn it's still there right there mm -hmm. on uh Ventura I want to say that is literally right right by Universal Studios mm -hmm. like we're staying right there by the subway by that place where people take all their head everybody take their head shots like and. In the midst of us staying there, I had an audition for Tracy Morgan show. And I booked it. So from there, but my mom had already lost her job mm -hmm. because I did a movie called Full Clip in Los Angeles. Matter of fact, that's what I was in LA for when I auditioned for Tracy Morgan show. Mm -hmm. And once we finished filming, I stayed a little longer to do some auditions and try to get some things going because my mama knew like, there's nothing to go back to. We got this little, we got this my baby daddy money. We got the full clip movie money, but Eventually, that's gonna run out, especially the price of living in LA. She's like, yeah. man, once I get the, you know, what I mean, get get us into a place and enroll and them in school. Was she and, able to touch the money though? Because I heard with child acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a percentage of it goes to a trust fund, okay. but you know what I mean. Yeah, there's always, you know what I mean. There's you need something to live off of, yeah. obviously. So, yeah, like um, she had a percentage, and you know what I mean. From there, she uh, once I did, once I auditioned for Tracy Morgan show, um, I booked it. And you know what I mean? That was that was like okay, that was her way to exhale. Like okay, cool. Like whew, it's paying off. Something that's gonna be steady. We yeah. know we got something that's gonna he gonna be it's a check every week. Yeah. Like now we're we're I, I, she's comfortable. She's like okay, cool. I can breathe. And a little how bit. old are you at this point? Um, I'm about seven. Now I mean, I'm freshly I, turning seven. Did you at that age understand money yet? Hell no. I understand money. I didn't know what it meant. Ten. You give me ten ten crisp dollar bills. I feel like I'm the richest kid in the world because I come okay. I come from nothing. I really come from stealing. I, I I remember vividly, probably I had to be three. Like I said, I, like I come from a long line of just fucking criminals, man. Yeah. Like three years old, we're stealing out the liquor store, out our neighborhood liquor store. I'm three, probably four years old. I'm I'm seeing them steals. So I'm putting shit in my pocket. Yeah, like it just that's you know what I mean. That's what came natural, and no, I'm seeing y'all do it, so that's what we doing. You know what I'm saying? That's. That's yeah. what's going on. You gotta see. You got that little crisp on there. You gotta um, put that little crisp on there. You gotta have a crunch. You know but I mean? at, so at this young age, do you start to feel any type of pressure? I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, did you feel any type of pressure no. to like? And succeed? that's another thing that credits. No, that's nothing that that's a credit to my mama because one of the first things she told me before shit even got to like a point where it was like, let's say like to where it was big and it was getting like colossal in a way. Like she made sure to let me know like. If you ever stop having fun with this shit, we're done with this shit. Okay. Like she told me that from Jump Street. The moment it's not fun for you no more, you let me know and it's over with. The moment you just want to go back to being a regular kid to go to school and that's what we'll do. So I always had that freedom to be like, whether I'm failing, succeeding, whether it's going my way, not going my way, I can say fuck this shit and my mama going to be behind me because she's not moved by the money. She's not moved by with the shit that enticed most parents when it comes to having yeah, their kids yeah. in Hollywood. Like, because it was never my mama's plan to do this. This was yeah. something that she just, this was God's plan and my yeah. mama followed God's plan, but this was never her plan. She's like, it makes me know never mind. Cause yeah. if I got to, I'm gonna go back to work and I'm gonna provide for mine. Yeah. That was always her attitude about it. Like it was never no if, ands or buts about it with my mama. So that, that made any type of pressure kind of subside. Any type of pressure that could have been there was like, ain't no way because 
I don't gotta, you feel me? Ain't shit I gotta do, but say I'm done with this shit and I can literally be done with this shit. Ain't nobody gonna be forcing me. Like a lot of child actors didn't have that to where their parents put them before the money. You know what I'm saying? Like my mama put me before the money and like, that's kind of why I shaped and molded how I came, how I am. Like I'm, I'm humble. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm down to earth for the most part. Like I'm not really, because I've never been raised that the money was everything. I've always been raised like morals, principles, you know what I mean? Yeah. What you stand for, what you stand on is what means the most. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like family, that's what yeah. means, you know what I mean? Like shit like that. Like that's just how I was brought up. Yeah. Yeah. So it was never really no pressure on my, on my part ever for real. I don't think so. Yeah. Not, not that I could ever remember. I don't ever remember. Pressure started once I got older. I started putting pressure on myself once I got older to, to live up to everything and all the accomplishments. I just tried to accomplish as a young boy. I'm like, I can't, I can't do nothing less than that. Now I did so much great as a young. Good's not good enough no more. And I was gonna say, was there ever a gap in between you being a young guy that was clearly very successful in his career? Like, was there a gap where there was? I, I like shit to wasn't popping. Yeah, where yeah, the industry, hell like, yeah. You know, you where the industry was like, nigga, fuck Bobby J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, where they, where they, where they chew me up. And they, I, I, as good as I was tasting, and they spit me out. Yeah, absolutely. Fucking. And what did that feel like? And what was your thought process through that? Um, it was. And it how was, old were you? I, I was to hit probably, you with so many. Nah, you good. You good. Um, I was probably about, I say, probably a freshman in high school, is when shit really started like slowing down and, and it came to like a, a damn near complete stop at a time. Like it was, it shit just wasn't popping. Like it wasn't going, like it shit wasn't popping. I was doing hella auditions. I wasn't booking shit. I wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't shit really popping. And like for me, it was like, damn, like what am I doing wrong in a sense? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I, I questioned myself, like damn, am I not good enough no more? Did they only, was I only good enough as, as this kid just mm -hmm. playing this badass smart mouth kid was mm -hmm. that the only thing they wanted me for to be that like do they not think i can really act and play different roles and mm -hmm. do different things like so i it, it troubled me for sure it troubled me for sure and then did you feel like peer pressure because like now at this point you're you're famous right yeah like i could say i felt i definitely felt a lot of i wouldn't say it was really peer pressure because the kids around me wasn't really i was the one pressuring kids to do shit like nigga i'm because I, I was smoking weed early mm -hmm. i was I was the one like bringing motherfuckers along. To, to, when to, when I say peer pressure, I'm not saying from your school because obviously yeah. at your school you're the top yeah. dog. and I you're stayed. Like, you're I the stayed in public one, school right? too. Yeah, where so. you you were very popular, right? Yeah. But industry wise, were you feeling t some type of pressure? No, because even a amongst my friend group of other child actors, I was the most successful. Okay. In my in my break, like this is not to sound cocky, it's not to be arrogant, none of that. In my in the time when it slowed down for me, none of the niggas I came up with caught me. Okay, okay. And not just, that's just the, that's just the guy's honest truth. But you know how what I'm long was the break? It lasted a probably a good, shit, at, at least a good five to seven years, I'd say. That's a, that's a long break. That's a break. That's so, damn a decade for sure. Like, yeah. My whole, my whole time in high school, like, I ain't had no motion. Like, I was living off of residuals yeah. and shit that I had been doing. Like, I think I, had, I probably did. Tyler Perry's House of Pain and uh, Tyler Perry's For Better or Worse mm -hmm. for a couple of years during high school. But I fucked that up. How? Dumb decisions. Uh, One of my buddies took his mama car and me just like, I'm, I'm a loyal nigga. Like, mm -hmm. nigga, we in it together. You took that motherfucking car. So I think I'm like 15. I'm just starting driving. I got a permit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm like, nigga, you took the car. Fuck it. The homie who we had, that was our older homie that was supposed to drive, left my nigga on stuck. Like, was mm -hmm. supposed to always, he was, he was supposed to come back, get him, get the car, take the car back to his mama. Mm -hmm. Boom, and no, you know what I mean? Nobody knows nothing. Buddy stopped answering his phone on us, leave us hanging. So before I'm like, fuck it, I'm not about to call your mama. Like, well, your car here, he here, come get the car. I'm like, fuck it, nigga, we together, you my dog, nigga, fuck it. We about to load up, we about to get in this motherfucker, I'm gonna drive you home, nigga, I'm gonna have a kid. There's one no Uber then. So yeah. I'm like, nigga, I gotta, I'm gonna call a cab ahead of time, have a cab waiting on mm -hmm. me. It's crib probably 10 minutes from my hotel I'm standing at the time. I'm like, bro, I, if I can't make it 10 minutes, something ain't right. But we yeah. make it 10 minutes, park this motherfucker in the parking structure, you go upstairs like you've been out hanging and banging, hooping all day. We good, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It didn't I love how like we're that. running from our moms, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, facts. Like, you, you good, you know what I mean? So, like, we gonna pretend it and hopefully mama will be ass. Hopefully mama and I don't, yeah. So, but it turns out that I wasn't as good a driver as I thought. Uh, I I crashed the shit out of that car, <laughs> pretty bad. But not only because it looked like I was a bad driver, it was pouring raining. So I mean, as a beginning as a beginner driver, you're not ready for that. Like 
so, and, I, and, I, and I'm and I'm rushing. I know it. Like I'm nervous. I'm rushing. I'm driving fast, trying to hurry up because my mom was in the next hotel room next door. Like we in a, and we're in joined rooms. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I got to get back before my mom. I got to be on set the next morning. I know my mom is gonna be knocking on this door to make sure my clothes are picked out for the next morning. I got everything together for work the next morning. So I'm like, nigga, I got to get you here and get back. Before my mama get wind or anything, you know what I'm saying? Before but I just realized, love how everybody was scared of their mama in this yeah, whole I'm story. Still, it's not even I'm anything. I'm still scared of my mama <laughs> to this day. To, what, what, what Deontay Wilder say? To this day, still scared of my mama. I don't play with that lady. She about four ten and, and all. My mama, my mama, littler than me, and don't fuck around. That's hilarious. She don't fuck around. Nick, now nah, they didn't see me get my ass whooped on the set before. For real? What? Man, listen. Call, call now when we finish the interview and ask him about the story. I got my ass whooped. On set, my mama sent me back to the. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm good now. <laughs> yeah, mama didn't play. Mama didn't fuck around, man. Mama didn't fuck I'm around. I may have to call oh. Nile on that. Yeah, call Nile on that. That's a story we laugh about all the time. To this day, we laugh about that. Whoa, okay. But so yeah, you... so I fucked it up. We crashed the car. We get arrested. So when we get arrested, this is when we get arrested. We get in the damn precinct with the damn mm -hmm. officers and. Me real at this point in my age, I'm starting to realize who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to realize like, I got money. I'm a young nigga with money and da da da. So I'm arrogant. I'm a little arrogant at this point. Mm -hmm. And my buddy, he was a young lit dude too. He was his his dad is somebody very very big time. You know what I mean? So we was lit. So we getting this motherfucker. We talking cash shit to the office. Man, what you talking about? Oh, you caused hundred fifty thousand dollars in damage. Mm -hmm. My partner like man, that's a Lamborghini. My daddy got two of them. I'm like, yeah, nigga, fuck you mean, nigga, the 150000 I'm going to make that this season, nigga. What you talking about? Like, I, I, what? Talking shit, you know what I mean? So that pissed the officers off to where the officers was going to release us to our mamas that night. We talked so cold to them niggas that they like, nope, you're going to jail. We're taking you to juvie. It's in Atlanta. We went, we went to Metro Juvenile Detention Center. I'll never forget it. And when we went there, we got there, and we were supposed to go to court the morning we got there. One of the one of the ladies that was like uh, the head of the, the juvenile detention center, older black lady, no nonsense. I wish I could remember her name because she 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 gave me a lot of game, a lot of game in that moment. And I didn't I didn't really take heed to it. Until I got a little older and really realized what she was trying to tell me. But she gave me a lot of game. And she said, wait, who are you? You, you who? And my buddy named after his daddy. So mm -hmm. when she said his name, you, you automatically know who his daddy is. Mm -hmm. So you who you who? Oh, y'all not going to you think I think I'm special. Ain't no specials in this motherfucker. Y'all not going to court the morning because you, 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 and you his son. And mm -hmm. No, you're going to court Wednesday. I think it's like a Saturday. So you were in jail for that many days? Yes, indeed. Ooh. So now you got to realize how much money I'm costing Mr. Perry mm -hmm. because now I'm not there to shoot. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking up big time because now they got to rearrange the whole shoot schedule around me. Yeah. And I'm not even the star of the show. I'm just, I'm the son yeah. of the stars of the show. So mm -hmm. I'm not even like, nigga, we... We, we fucking up millions of dollars because of you? Like, and this is before I realized how much a day of shooting really costs yeah. between cameras and crews and cast yeah. members and everybody getting paid, transportation yeah. people, catering. Like, mm -hmm. it's a million dollar day that I just fucked off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I could see me, if I, if I run into Mr. Perry, I'm like, bro, my bad, dog. Yeah. Because now I'm an adult. I understand yeah. what I did. You know what I mean? The, the where, where I went wrong at, you know what I mean? But as a young, arrogant nigga that just think I know it all and, you know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't no shit. So. Wow. Yeah, man, it, it 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 taught me a lot though. Like I said, we go to jail, we go to court Wednesday, we get released from court. But by this time, I done missed three days of work, so that means three days of filming had to be rearranged based off of my stupid ass decision. I mean, I wouldn't really say it was a stupid decision. It was a decision where like it was a I, young decision. It was a young decision, and like I can't say I wouldn't make the same decision today. I'm a loyal nigga. I'm a, I'm with my dog. Like it is yeah. what it is. Like it ain't no nigga that. A, <clears throat> I just no want to know. I thought like he would have did the same for me. Did your mom whoop your ass? She actually didn't. She, at this point, we was past ass whoopings. So now she, like, I was I'm about 15, so I'm getting to that age where, like, okay, mama, these, this little belt, these little ass whoopings ain't really, yeah, mm -hmm. it ain't nothing. So now she would get me no phone, no Xbox. Mm -hmm. And then she took my freedom. I'm, I remember I'm just now starting to fuck, right? So I'm, I'm in my own hotel room. I say, I'm in, my, I'm in a joint room. My mom in another room. It's a door. I can always lock that door and keep mm -hmm. her out of it. Mm -hmm. So she cut me all the way off. No phone, no, uh, no game. And I don't get my own room anymore. Now I'm in a double bed with her. Oh, that I was can't enough. even. That I, was enough right there. 15, the double bed at ah! 15 years old. The where you thinking like, oh, I got to share a room with my mama. Like I don't even want my mama kissing me in public. I got to go to bed next. to My mama right there. This is how we right here. I'm in the bed. My mama in the bed. That is That's embarrassing. Like it's like nigga. I wake up like every day. Like 
my mama right there. Like I can't even say what I want to say. I can't do what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't got my phone as it is, so I ain't like I could I could call my girl and talk on the phone with my girl any goddamn way because I don't got no damn That's phone. That's hilarious. But yeah, man, mama didn't play. She she said, okay, we going you want to be a jailbird? I'm gonna treat you like jail right here. You don't get no privileges, nigga. You got a you got a you got a cellmate. I'm your cellmate, nigga. And I'm big dog, nigga. I got top bunk. I I control the TV, all that, nigga. I get shower first, nigga, all that. Yeah, mama was on that. Like, mama wasn't fucking around. Mama Your mama was on that. need to teach me. Shout out to the mom. You need to teach yeah. me how to be a mom. She a that, mama, that, that's that's how you supposed to do it, yeah, though. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. For sure. For and sure. I, I, yeah, it's okay. So she taught that lesson. You cook that food. Let's try this. Yeah, this let's is, do uh, it, man. We so got the, the bread. All you take is one slice, right? All it oh, it's is one slice. Oh, my bad. So, I thought nah, we were making good. a sandwich. Uh-uh. I mean, you could, but then it becomes it becomes too much bread. Right? Okay. So get you one good slice. Like I say, I'm a nigga that. I'll be overdoing it. I, I like a lot of bacon. So I'm the type of nigga I put that down. Look at this. This is hilarious. Right, and you gotta you sort of boom. Are you folding the bread? Yeah. Okay. You know what's happening. I'm touching it with my hands. Go ahead, do your thing. I'm not doing the do whole. Do your thing. You know. Yeah, hey, do your thing. Okay, here we go. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, go ahead and get your bread. I in want to pack it. Yeah, you gotta pack it right. You gotta get it right. You gotta you get packed one. it a lot. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. A, right here. Is that's right. where you at with it? Okay, mm -hmm. well, if that's where you at, I'm gonna add a couple more, right? You gotta put them two across like that so when it. Hit a crunch when it. Mm-hmm. And you gotta squeeze it real quick. Hold you gotta on, make it real. On. That's what I'm saying. You gotta put the hold two. On, yeah, yeah. You gotta get in there to get it crispy. And you gotta. Uh. I love how. Uh, I love nothing more. Just so you know, than when guests get really into this whole. Yeah, this shit real. This, I still eat this today. I ain't even broke no more, and I was still. I fuck a bacon sandwich. So up. you squish it and you squish the bread. Yeah, you squish the bread. You get it. Yeah, you gone. Yeah, you hear that crunch when you do that. Yeah, yeah that's what. That's what get me right. And then you get you. Get your knife up. Now, simple, easy, no, Bobby. salty, no, Bobby. I love it. I don't know how I can. I don't know how you don't like it. I love it. Just salty and and sweet from no. the bread. It's perfect. In desperate measures, yes, but you know, just since I'm gonna rate his dish. You need some kind of condiments, man. But okay, so you tell me what the hell is condiment? We're gonna put barbecue sauce on the bacon. Male. Ew. On bacon? That's your Caucasian side coming out. <laughs> Talking about some mayo. You if you just said miracle whip, if you just said miracle whip, oh, I'd have been like with you. Oh, it looks like blacks like miracle whip and all that. Whatever. If you said miracle whip, like I'm miracle with you. I'm a, I ain't gonna lie. I love miracle whip. Miracle whip would have did it. That's crazy because now that I think about it, I used to put miracle whip on this joint. I used to put miracle whip on here. That's the one thing I showed sure did. But it's just something about this sandwich so dry. I would put Miracle Whip on it. It's just something about the the sweet taste of the white bread mm -hmm. mixed with the salty of the turkey bacon, mm -hmm. and it ain't greasy like pork bacon where the bread greasy. start falling apart. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? That's what I like about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's why you got some good water, man. You feel well, me? That's I will say, I on the affordable meter, this this you won't starve to death. You will hit your protein, your carbs. I'm telling you, and the bread gonna do it every time, Mike. I'm telling you, every time. Yeah. You go on this hiatus. Mm. So after the Tyler Perry situation, mm -hmm. is there any like well, is there any conversation about it? Are you fired or fired as fuck? Fired as fuck. Fired as fuck. But I respect Mr. Perry to this day because look, you still eating somebody motherfucker dropping that motherfucker busting. Look at it, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Stop playing. You see what's going I'm on. I'm hungry, buddy. I know you're hungry. That's what I'm saying. When you're hungry, just tell me. Mm -hmm. tell me. This is how I got to be. But yeah, it was. I guess you're right. I shouldn't hate because the salt does help. I'm telling you, I respect Mr. Perry though because before he fired me, mm -hmm. he pulled me in his office. I had a conversation. He said, "Listen, man." He looked at me and said, "What is it you want out of this shit? Like, what is it like? What you want? The money, the cars, the private jets? I got it all. I'm doing it all. I've seen it all. I've had it all. I've been. Is that what you want? You say, bro, that shit is in your arm's reach, but you fucking up. You're fucking it up for yourself." Nobody else, you're fucking it up for yourself. Now, me, the arrogant 15 year old I am, I'm just thinking he's just talking to you, gonna give me a talking to, then we back to the money. I'm not knowing I'm about to get fired. Mm -hmm. I'm not knowing it's the last conversation I'm ever had with Mr. Perry in my mm -hmm. life. You feel me? Like, I'm not knowing. I'm thinking, like, all right, you gonna, you gonna talk to me. It's like a, like a principal at school. You're gonna talk to me, but mm -hmm. eventually it's gonna be like, whatever, send me back to class. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So he said, you fucking up. And, you know what I mean? Gave me kind of good talking to like, bro, you fucking up, and you know what I mean? That shit ain't cool. Like, bro, you call, you know how much money you cost me? Like, you kept it real. Like, you know how much money you cost me? Like, you cost me a lot of fucking money, bro. Like, 
money you don't have to replace. I could pay you that. I can't. He was like, you can do 10 seasons of this show. You still wouldn't have enough money to replace what, what it just cost me to work around you being in jail because you're doing some dumb shit. In my mind, like I said, I feel <clears throat> like it wasn't no dumb shit. Like I was, I was doing what I felt like my dog would have did for me if the mm -hmm. roles were reversed. Like, yeah. like my loyalty has always been one of my biggest downfalls in my life. I feel like, like I've always been loyal to, I won't say the wrong people, but mm -hmm. I've always been loyal to my, a fault. Been loyal to a fault. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Like, and, and I've and I've picked the wrong times to display my loyalty when it's like sometimes you're like, look, bro, you know I fuck with you. You know mm -hmm. I got your back. But <clears throat> this is how I provide for my family. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> my mama don't got no job. Yeah. My little sister don't work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> At the time, I think my brothers was, like, I want to say my brothers was. Do you need <clears throat> a second? You need a second? Got the bacon stuck in your throat? Little piece of bacon stuck. You hear the voice changing? <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm like, uh, are you okay? Take a second. Hold on. I think we back. <clears throat> Okay. Are you back, Bobby? Yeah, I'm back. Cool. Okay. All right. So, at the time, my brothers is locked up for bank robbery. Mm -hmm. Like, I come from a long line of motherfuckers that don't really like asking for people for shit. Like, yeah. my brothers were very aware of the fact that their little brothers on TV. Mama got different. Mama has funds and access to money to help y'all, but my mama was like, if y'all want, y'all to come to LA. Ain't I'm not sending y'all no money back there to go buy whatever you gonna mm -hmm. buy and try to sell it on the street and da, da, da. I'm not sending you no money to I'm not gonna turn you into no kingpin. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna do that with this mm -hmm. money. You know what I mean? If you're gonna come out here, you're gonna come out here, you're gonna go to set with your brother. I put you on a on the payroll mm -hmm. as his handler. Mm -hmm. One gonna be his handler, the other one gonna be my personal assistant. And you know what I mean? But they wasn't with that. Like, man, I'm I'm thugging for real. Like we in the streets with this, we in the streets with this shit. So it's like they they the measures they took was they went and robbed the bank. So they gone. They doing time at the mm -hmm. time, you know what I mean? So it's like everything depending on me. If I would have, if I knew, if I knew what I know now, I said I probably would have still found a way to help him get that car mm -hmm. back without his mama knowing and not left him hanging to where. Because shit, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, if you get in trouble for this car being here, I'm still, I'm fucked too. Like regardless of the fact, it's, li it's literally nigga, me getting this car back save both of y'all, save both of our ass because. Yeah. My mom's like, so what the fuck y'all been doing with this car? All that nigga? So, so you, what you told him to come take his mama car and bring it to you? Yeah. Like, I'm guilty by association regardless. Mm -hmm. So it's like, nigga, I got to save both of our ass. You know what I mean? That's how I was thinking about it. But like, now that I'm older, I probably would be like, man, bro, look, we about to find a cab driver. I'm going to pay this cab driver to drive you and your mama car home. I love how you're still, like, you know. Something. I, I would came up with another alternative. It's funny because it's, it's a slippery slope. You have these moms that are very caring and loving, right? Absolutely. And you have your friendship to your friend. And mm -hmm. I'm not knocking any of the moms. And mm -hmm. it was good that they instilled the fear they did. But if you really look at the root of the problem is, it's kind scared of like of you scared of your mama. Mm -hmm. And again, not knocking because I think my mom had this conversation with me. I have a two-year-old. And she said, you know, do you have enough control over her if she has to cross the street? And you say, stop you know, don't cross. Will she be mm -hmm. able to stop? And I knew the answer was absolutely not. Like... <laughs> Would never happen. My daughter will yeah, be like, a, no. I got a two year old, so <laughs> but 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 I say that to say that I I get you looking back and saying I would do it all again because of these these moral standards. And I have the same problem. By the way, I'm loyal to, loyal a, to fault. a fault. Like you could I'll be like, well they whatever. But but I will say this though, but if you look at it, the things that you guys were running from was like the pure fear Getting of your trouble. moms. From your and moms. It's like, the trouble from our mamas ain't ain't as bad as the trouble the trouble from, that you from, guys yeah, got into. Like, yeah. well, if I look back, like man, we might as well just take these little ass whoopings, be on punishment, can't hang out for yeah a week or two. But it's like nigga, we'll find a way to still hang out. Or, but you can also, you know, if you look at psychology, I always say like, you know, young brains they're not fully mature. They're not weighing out all the options. And I can see where it's like I was terrified of my mom, nigga. Yeah, I would have yeah. done. I would have gotten in a car accident to avoid yeah. my mom. So I get it. But um, going back to the Tyler Perry situation, mm -hmm. um, and it's good that you talk about it and you're going back and forth because I think it yeah. really gets us to see, like, your care, your core character, yeah, like, sure. where your values are at. Like, I thought about it a hundred times. Would I have done it again? Yeah, yeah probably, I would. Yeah. I just probably would have. Did it a little different. A little did it differently. But... All I've been taught is not what you do is how you do it. So I would have yeah. probably switched the way I went about it. Yeah. Like, Somebody like and like I said, I was I'm I'm a young nigga with I'm 15 years old, but I got a debit card. I'm having I got a certain yeah. amount of money on my car. So I'd have been like, bro, there gotta be an adult with a driver that I can pay. Like, bro, drive this car to this location, don't go a step further. 
But I think there was there were so many things. Like even when out. you hear the story, it's like you have this young person who's acquired some kind of status, who has friends of status. You know, even when you guys get arrested and you're like around each other. I I remember being like 15 or 16 and the first time I ever cursed was like behind my mom's back. She walks in the room, she catches me cursing, but I'm mm. amongst my friends like that F and B did it. I don't remember the words, but all it was my mom walked in and I said, oh my God, this is the day I die, you uh -huh. know? Uh -huh. But when yeah. you get around your friends at that age, you're like, I'm, I'm big and bad, you yeah, know? And absolutely. that's a part of being- Part of growing up. Growing up, yeah. right? So. Logical. Everything you did seems like totally rational at your yeah, age, and then and sure. then a fifteen year old with responsibilities, who's working, who's yeah. earning his own money, who's providing for his family. But take like me my back. My whole this, intention was like get it done and get to work. Yeah, get the get it done, get to work. Um, but Tyler Perry has this conversation. Does he fire you at the end of the conversation? No, he has a conversation with me, and I think I finished. I do my filming, whatever they shoot my scenes out for that mm -hmm. day, and I I'm gone. I think they flew me out like the next day. So it was it was a silent firing. Okay. The firing part was silent. I just had to get the picture like, oh nigga, they done. I'm not coming back. Like they done with me. And it, it was it was people that was upset about it though. Because they were like, bro, he's a kid. You gotta mm -hmm. this is your this is the opportunity to be, you know what I mean? To 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 kind of be I said, my daddy was in my life for sure, but it was like this is the opportunity to 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 give him that that, that lesson grace, as yeah. a as a man. That it that's that he looks up to that mm -hmm. as a man like I do feel like he could have went about it differently. Yeah, I cost you money. Yeah, but money, all that, that shit come back. The opportunity to teach a lesson to a young black man that comes from nothing, just like you come from nothing, and and, and, the, and to show me like, nah, bro, come on, nah, you can't. I feel like I feel like he could have took that opportunity and did a little. I feel like I the same did, way I could have did things it, differently. He could have did shit differently. It's a slippery slope. Like I, said, slippery. I did see uh, Tyler Perry's documentary. Did you ever yeah. get to see it? I haven't watched the whole thing, but I I, I yeah. knew his story just from working with him kind of. I mean? didn't know his story, but I do know, like, I remember when I first moved to LA hearing about his plays or whatever, and people were like talking about this guy who had this play and it was like maybe a tape that was going around or something. Or I just yeah. remember people talking about it. But when I saw the documentary and everything he went through, I think that... I don't know if, especially as a teenager, like it's sometimes grace can be a slippery slope. You give someone yeah. grace. And I don't and know if I would have appreciated the grace. I probably would have kept fucking up. Yeah, like it's it's a slippery slope. And I'm learning that as an adult. Like you can give grace, but it's a slippery slope because there's a thin line between grace and disrespect sometimes. I just you know, feel like, like if the roles were reversed and I'm in that position, I take that young nigga under my wing. Like, nah, little bro. I would have been like, hell nah, I'm going to make sure you don't fuck up no more. Nigga. I'm about to show you some shit. That we're like, nigga, you know, like, oh, I got to get to this. Like, but also, I got to get to that. So I know the only way to get to that is to follow in the foot. He, I got to not fuck up no more yeah. and follow in these footsteps. Like, show a young nigga the way, bro. I'm a young nigga that really come from nothing. Every nigga I ever looked up to them been in, is a felon. Mm -hmm. My daddy, every last one of my, I got one brother that ain't a felon. And he lives in fucking Australia. And I, and before he lived in Australia, he went to college in fucking South or North Dakota mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. And like, we got the same daddy, not the same mama. So we're close, but we weren't in the same household. Every man in the household that I came up in was that doing was time. Example. That was my example, nigga, to thug it out until you can't no more. Like, that's just what I knew. That's what I, that's still just what I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's just how I was, that's how I was brought up in a sense. Like, my mama did their absolute best, but it, it, a young man is not going to model himself after his mother. Yeah, yeah, no. It's no. impossible. I'm going to model myself after the men. In my life, I look up to, like I said, my brother, my the closest brother I got to my age is 10 years older than me. Yeah. So when I was born, he was 10 years old. By the time I'm able to really pay attention to what he's doing, he's 13, 14, and then I got a 16, and I got an 18. Mm -hmm. At 18, bro, gone doing 10 years. The oldest gone doing 10 years. Mm -hmm. I remember vividly the police coming and knocking on my mama's door, mm -hmm. taking him away. Mm -hmm. I remember that, seeing that. Probably five years old, maybe. Mm -hmm. I might have been four. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was young as shit. Like, I remember seeing that vividly. I remember seeing the police kick in the door mm -hmm. in my daddy's house and, 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 and take my daddy to jail, foot on my daddy's neck, foot on my brother. I remember seeing that. Everything that I seen and everything, everybody I looked up to was full-fledged gangsters. Like, I ain't, that's just all I've ever had to look up to was niggas that were in the streets. I've never really had nobody that was on a positive path take me under their wing and be like, this the way it go, little bro. Now, to your career now, because I know you're... And I don't want to speed bump. I really don't right. like to speed bump. But yeah. since we know some of the same people, you have someone like Niall or Nick. Yeah. Um, Nick is one of those people, like, he sees something in you. I want to say Nick is the... Nick is I don't I'm want, a fuck up. 
Huh? Nick think I'm a fuck up. Okay, so I'm going to say this. I feel like- Nick loves me, but keeps me at a distance because he feels like I'm a liability, I think. That's just me being well, honest. So I feel, so- Nick loved the shit out of me, though. But it's like, he think I feel like he thinks I'm too hard-headed. I don't think he feel like I don't listen or I won't listen. But it's like, nigga, you've never really told me nothing to listen to. Well, yeah, because I feel like <laughs> I sense. worked with Nick for like 10 years and I would see Nick joke with like a lot of people around me. We were very close in age. I think everyone Nick surrounds himself for the most part are like 20 years older than him. Exactly. Like, you know, or now he's like always the close. like now Nick has always been the little bro. He's the always, is like, yeah. So Nick has never been the big bro to be like, nah, come here, my nigga. But he, well, has, he has it now. He, he has now like more so like more recently. But I think for me, like. I think Nick just think I'm so far gone, but it's like, nigga, I just am who I am. Well, if you take some time to have a conversation with Bobby J the man, because you know Bobby J the kid, and you can't understand how that kid you knew turned in, but nigga, you got to understand, I was a kid that was trained to be the kid you but, knew. And but that's what I want to say. You know what I'm saying? I want to say this about him, because I worked with him for 10 years, mm -hmm. and he would joke with everybody. He, you know, he, I'd be lying to say, Nick, he's closer to my age group, I whether or not I thought he was okay or attractive looking was whatever. But I just knew because we we're around the same age, we work together, you know, industry be like, oh, they are cooking up. And so we were very, very uh, business or whatever. Yeah. But I remember like the one or two times where Nick was like, you're fucking up. Yeah. And, and his, you know, never, ever had no real conversation. But there was one or two conversations where he was like, you may want to reconsider some of your 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 moves, you know. Yeah. And so I think just personality wise, he's one of those people that he don't really mentor. He's not even like your yeah, best this is friend. Not his personality. Yeah, I think he had in in Nile like, more so. Like I didn't. Nile, I didn't have moments with Nile. Where Nile, I'd be like, man, what the fuck? Let me you? tell you something. <laughs> like, ain't, ain't nobody had my back more than Nile. But Nile sometimes sure. can stab me in the like the our last conversation. He said something, and I didn't take his call after this and. Hope, you know he don't listen. Thank God he don't listen to all my episodes. But but Nile, I think is a straight shooter. And when you nah, when the sure. chips are down, I don't give a fuck if you work with Nile. You never had a real conversation with him. He is that nigga that you could be gonna like. Put his neck on the line for he you. He gon you he gon take the call. Been, been time, I'd have been in jail, fucked up. Nile, I'm talking about he paid power to money. Yeah, Nile, lawyer is, money. What you lawyer money? Hey, just Nile, give me back. Did you you know like, Dorian too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah all I them Dorian, niggas is uh solid. I would say all of them, um, and but I think the way Nick moves is, I think he pays attention to, and I've said this to people, I think he trusts no one, nah, and he watches sure. everybody. Everything. Yeah, for sure. So for like, sure. you'll be like, I walked in the room, he didn't even say hi. It's like, Nick knew you were there before you entered the building. Like, every move is his is chess, and he doesn't do the controversial stuff. Absolutely. Um, And I like I said, the only two times he's ever pulled me to the side when it was like a for sure fuck up, and it was a yeah. very short, like, you may want to reroute. Cause this could end bad. I've got, I've got you know? that from now. I've never even got that from Nick to be like, "Hey, bro, let me not let you, bro. What the fuck? Like you tripping, mm -hmm. nigga? But Fix it, that. Figure that out. You know what I mean? But yeah. now, on the other hand, has been like, man, come here. Like, but yeah. now at the same time, now has a better understanding of who I am, mm -hmm. my what I like, my mm -hmm. trauma, what causes me to be that yeah. way. He got a better understanding of that than yeah. than Nick does. You know what I'm saying? Like. So I can. That's why I can feel like now it's easier for to be able to come to me and be like, "Hey, man, what the fuck is you doing? You tripping? Yeah. Nigga? I know that this is the circumstance. I know this happened. I know this happened. I know that happened. But, nigga, everything that happened has nothing to do with the next ten years of your life, the decisions you finna make, and how you set yourself up for success or failure. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you know what I mean? Like I said, I appreciate. Like, there's nothing. There's nothing bad about it. It's just Nick is not the mentoring type, and that's cool. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just for me. I've always looked at Nick like big brother because I've known the nigga since I was like eight well, you've been years around, old. Yeah, you've been around. Like I met Nick at the Kids' Choice Awards and you can find the pictures on Google. Like if you yeah. go Google my name and Google Bobby J. Thompson, Nick Cannon, you'll find the picture of Nick with a big stupid baggy jersey on and some fucking headband, neck braids. Me, yeah. But foot, I will nothing. say this. You know what I mean? Like, and, I, and I told my little brother this when he was working with Nick was like, I think just, and just, just because I've been kind of in the offices versus on sets yeah. i'll just say like on observation i tell i told eagle this like if you're in the room he fucks with you and he believes in you absolutely period absolutely. you period if you are in the room he made that executive decision nick has always believed in you yeah i just think like i said he has that um, million layers of fencing around him mm -hmm. um, as he should and, as he should because if you know his story it's like yeah, yeah nigga yeah, i would have a million layers no, of fencing sure. but to go back to your story um 
did you eventually, I know you mentioned Niall, but did you start to seek out mentors at some point? No, or did just, you just stumble upon I'm them? Just, I ain't got none. I just be learning as I go for real. Like I bump, I learn from my mistakes. I bump my head mm-hmm. and I know like I don't want that same knot right there in the middle of my forehead no more. So let me figure it out. Like I've never I said my my dad was always a person that gave game, but by the time me and my daddy got to be like where, where it was cuz I was like I was in LA a lot of years. I wasn't in Kansas City. Like my dad when my daddy did get out of prison, mm-hmm. I was living in Los Angeles. He was in Kansas City. And then by the time I came back home, I'm already smoking weed. I'm already kind of doing my own thing. I'm already kind of shaping and molding myself into who I believe that I want and who I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be. So, you know what I mean? My daddy couldn't do really couldn't really do much but advise and 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 you know what I mean, kind of sit there. And then that's another thing my daddy, my daddy was like, nigga, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to bump your head because you're hard headed. Mm-hmm. That I've always been hard headed. Like I I was a hard headed kid, I was a hard headed teenager. So, like I said. I've always learned from my own experience. But at the same time, I don't think, I think if somebody was to be like, no, nah, come here, nigga, learn from, learn from what I'm about to tell you, mm-hmm. learn from what I'm about to show you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I would, now, do I would, you think that that, that person would have to be, because I know with mentors, uh, I'm, I, I'm a diehard mentor freak. I, yeah. first, I mentor people and I'm like, everyone I know, you get a mentor. Yeah. Um, But I think with men, and what I've seen over the years with men is like, I feel like it can't just be any guy that it grabs you. It gotta be somebody you, be you guy respect, you kind somebody of respect. you look yeah. up to, somebody exactly. that, that you can see. Your, somebody that's where you want to be or further, or somebody that you like, okay, yeah, I can listen to you because you got the formula to go where I'm trying to go or be and, where, and, or you've and, been where I, where, where I'm in the direction I've, I've, I'm headed. You know what I mean? Like yeah. something like that. Like, but it's hard to But take. it's also not just that. It's like, can you relate to where I'm from? It yeah. has to be the the cocktail, yeah. right? Yeah. Especially, I think, for a, a black man, it has to be that cocktail of, you know, you can't just be successful and you came from money. It has to be you were successful and your dad is similar to my dad. And yeah. then we could talk about you mentoring yeah. me, right? Yeah. Is that, am I correct in, in sense, that? yeah, for sure, for so, sure. Okay. Like, so, yeah, it definitely, I, that's definitely a big part of it, for sure. Right, like, yeah. And I think that's why, like, I would, I think that's why, like, for me, I personally like, damn, like, I wish bro would be like, hey, nah, come here, bro, because you somebody I've always looked from, up I'm a to. Look yeah. here before we even actually work together. I stopped Nick on the red carpet, like, hey, Nick, what's up? Like, mm-hmm. nigga, like, and for I didn't say these words verbatim. I'm like, man, I fuck with you. Yeah, and, like, I don't remember what, but in in so many words, that's why I'm telling, like, bro, I'm a I'm a fan. Um, I look up to you, nigga. Mm-hmm. What you're doing in Hollywood, where you started, nigga, that's the path I'm trying. That's where I'm trying to get yeah. to. Like, I see what you're doing, and at this time, nigga's probably fresh off a drum line. Uh, like this, oh, this okay, is like okay. young Nick. Like this is this young, is two thousand. Yeah. It's two thousand five. Like you yeah, know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like this is this young bull. Like and I'm I'm super super young bull. So yeah. it's like I said. I think I think eventually a conversation will be had. But it's like the nigga doesn't have time for conversation. Like well, not right <laughs> sometimes now. a nigga's so busy he don't even have time to sit down and talk to you. Yeah. He barely has time to be like, "What's up." He yeah. barely has time to sit down and talk to himself, hear his own thoughts sometimes because yeah. it's always something, a phone call, a, a conference call, a meeting. So it's like, it's not nothing, again, it's nothing that yeah. he's doing wrong or bad. It's just like, nigga, sometimes it doesn't go the way it's supposed to. But like I said, nigga, I'm damn near 30 years old. Like, mm-hmm. I shouldn't need that. You know what I mean? Like, I should be able to. Well, I don't know. I shouldn't even need at, it, but it's, yeah. it's good to have, but I shouldn't need it. I should be yeah. able to see where I'm going, where where I'm headed and what I need to do wrong. I mean what I need to do differently mm-hmm. to get where I'm trying to get as at this age in my life. It shouldn't yeah. be no like at at in your early like 17, 18 year, I feel like it's needed. It's kind of mm. needed to have that, especially because becoming a man is different. Like it's it's yeah. becoming a man that that's a different monster. Like yeah. when you're really finding out who you are as a man mm-hmm. versus who you thought you were or who you who you who you want it to be, it's time to face around and realize, like, no, this is who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always wanted to be the 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 completely uh, upstanding, straightforward citizen nigga, no trouble, whatever. Been. I never wanted to be a felon or a, you know what I mean, a nigga that done broke the law or somebody yeah. that's, you know what I mean, been in jail or whatever. I've never wanted to be that, but that was just, I had a face reality, like, nigga, that is who I am. That's not, that. I mean, that's, that's, that is who I am or who I became, but that doesn't have to be the end of the story. Yeah. Like I can grow from that, but it's like, nigga, what necessary steps do you got to take within yourself to grow from that? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's where I'm at in life now, just figuring out the things I got to do differently to grow and, and 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 to elevate, you know what I mean? Without somebody being like, oh, here, bro, come on, I'm going to show you the way. 
Fuck that, nigga. Show yourself the way. You've been showing yourself the way, and you done got damn far. You may not be as far as you wanted to go, but you're a lot further I was than a gonna lot say, of other people. Yeah, if you look at, uh, I think I seen a video online, and I'm gonna butcher it, but it was like a video where all these kids were wanting a race, and I think they had different kids starting at different starting points, and the kids yeah. that were less privileged started from way further back. Yeah. So when you look at your race, you've done amazing. Matter of fact, mm. when I got the opportunity to interview you, it was kind of beautiful because it was like. I've worked with you, but I've seen I'm more like crossing paths. I don't think we've ever yeah. really had conversations, but it's kind of, it's beautiful when you get someone of your caliber into our studio and it's just like you see the growth and you don't know how that person's going to come off. You don't know if they're going to be like cocky, arrogant yeah. or, you know, I've seen people come in here like I ain't never been broke. I'm amazing. You know, no, um, she I done been up, back damn. down, back uh, up again. <laughs> now I'm, I don't, I'm slipping and falling, but I ain't down yet. Yeah. Now I'm back, man. I done seen every walk of this shit. And you've and you've managed. Now, how have you been managing your money and stuff? Has that been um, like I've when gotten, did you start to really learn how to manage it? Shit, when a nigga started catching cases and lawyer fees and mm -hmm. bond money and shit like that, started and it was like, damn nigga, but you just bought a chain last month. But wait, you Stupid caught cases for that. what? Dumb, Dumb stuff. Shit. Okay, carrying, so like uh, keeping, but I ain't gonna. Like, I mean, like it, I caught a I caught a gun case, and then before that, I caught a case for I got in a fist fight mm -hmm. and broke the boy jaw. Mm -hmm. And because of the jaw being broken, it was a great bodily injury and it became a felony and blah, blah, blah. And like mm -hmm. I said, because I was poorly managing my money, I couldn't afford um, I couldn't afford a paid lawyer until far down the line. And I, I, went, on, I went on a run for six months. Like I was like, fuck the shit. They were going to have to come get me. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I was able to, I came back to LA. I got locked up. I called Niall. Mm -hmm. Niall, I, unk. That's unk to me. Like mm -hmm. that's who I call, I call him unk. Like. Now um, I'm I'm fucked up. I'm I'm here. They, the lawyers say three thousand up front. If you can help me with that up front, I can figure out a way get mm -hmm. me out of here, and I can I can scrape up whatever the fuck else I got to yeah. scrape up and make it make sense. And as soon as I'm back on my feet, I'm gonna pay you back. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like whatever yeah. it's gonna be. And like nigga, the nigga sent it before I could hang up the jail phone. Like yeah, yeah. It was it was there. That's like, Nile. Like, Let me yeah, tell you that's something. That's Nile, that is bro. fucking like, Nile. That's why like a nigga, I I ain't gonna lie. Like a nigga can't really. Nigga can't really say nothing bad about dude to me, bro. It ain't a time where nigga, I, 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 mm. I'm gonna go to war for dude because he didn't have to. He ain't have to, bro. Like that nigga got kids, he got responsibilities, he got a wife, yeah. he got a household that he's the mm -hmm. sole provider for. Like nigga, like you didn't have to go. I don't give a fuck if it was three thousand. I don't give a fuck if it was five thousand. Yeah, I don't give a fuck yeah. if it was three hundred, my nigga. Yeah. Whatever it was, nigga, you went in your pocket. And you send it. I don't know what your financial standing was at the time. I don't know what you had going on, what responsibilities you had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who knows? But you didn't make it. Wasn't you? Didn't, it didn't matter. Yeah. yeah. You said what? Yeah. I got you. And nigga, before I can get off that jail phone, this point I'm like, I'm like, Unc, you think you think you think Nick can help us out? You're like shit. You can call that nigga, but I'm gonna send you what I'm gonna send you right now. You can try to call that nigga. And I'm like, I don't know if you ever asked Nick for I money. I don't be like, <laughs> I, I I ain't gonna call you. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong though. There's been a time where I did, where I did ask Nick, and Nick came through for it. I've, I've asked Nick for money, but let me just tell you something. There's always accountants that I gotta talk to, and I didn't have to go to no accountants. Nick, Nick, Nick treated me like mm. little bro, and was like, "I'm gonna what? remember that. I'm an Apple Pay you." I'm like, a, was one, I never discredit. Like I said, like Nick, he, I don't, yeah, so what? He didn't mentor me. But when yeah. the nigga called him and said, "Hey, Nick, I, I need, need you. you." Yeah, yeah. The nigga, the nigga was there for He's me. There, then, yeah. then, then, he, then not only did he give me some money, he said, "Hey, look, I'm about to come and put you in this movie. Get you a couple extra dollars in your pocket." Okay, yeah, yeah. Like quick, fast, like nigga, and I, like, like I said, yeah. like I'm appreciative of that. Like nigga, fuck, fuck the mentorship, fuck nigga. When I needed you. You like, were there. Yeah. You was there for me. And the, and like, now you're doing Wild and Out and you you guys yeah. are working together consistently. Yeah, absolutely. So where do you see yourself going from here? Like what is the plan? Man. And 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 is there really can there ever really be a plan in this entertainment business? Because I feel I was like about it's to say so it's rocky. hard though. I'm gonna say, yeah, this shit be so iffy, dog. Like unless you a nigga with like unless you a nigga with like a like a Kevin Hart or like a Nick mm -hmm. where you got a production you can you can go and put some money behind what you want to do mm -hmm. it it's really hard to have a plan for this side of the shit like you know mm -hmm. what I mean like I said then my real love is music like mm -hmm. if the person asked me what my plan is where I see myself at selling out arenas doing what I really and genuinely truly love to do that's making And when you music, say music like rap music yeah, or rap. okay okay yeah, okay so like that's that's always been me and like because from for, for me like when I rap, 
it gives people an inside look to like y'all have seen y'all know that y'all fell in love with these roles i played mm -hmm. y'all have seen me y'all claim y'all seen me grow up but not really mm -hmm. y'all seen the roles i played mm -hmm. growing up mm -hmm. which i don't y'all didn't get to see me i didn't go home with me when them cameras went off y'all didn't see y'all didn't know what my reality was y'all mm -hmm. just knew what y'all seen on tv so it's like that music always gives people kind of an inside look because I'm not rapping as nobody mm -hmm. else but Bobby. So the shit I'm talking about, the shit I'm speaking on, the shit I really lived through, shit I really did to survive, shit I really had to go through, shit I really learned from, spots where I really bumped my head, like that's giving the people the chance to really get to know me. And I feel like that's important for people to really know who Bobby is because so many people have it misconstrued based off of what y'all watched me do on TV for the longest time. Like, they just think, oh, this nigga was a silver spoon kid. He had it all good. He was Especially when TV, you start that like, young. Yeah, you know what I mean? Niggas think it's all good. Nigga, you know, for one, you, like, listen, you don't get in Hollywood right now and just get rich immediately. 20 years ago when I started, you really, they wasn't giving out money how they giving out now. Mm -hmm. Niggas is becoming a millionaire in a year. Mm -hmm. Like, year, a year tops, you you do some cool shit on, you get a, a, a buzz on the internet, blah, 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 and then you a millionaire immediately damn near. If not a millionaire, you, you damn near close. Mm -hmm. Is they gonna keep you pumping and working and like the internet is so powerful now. The internet was just becoming a thing when I came up. Yeah. So uh -huh. it wasn't like and, you couldn't and, go and you couldn't go and grab your own audience. The only time you had an audience is when them people put you in front of one. And even with the internet, I noticed it's like uh how fast you take to it. Yeah. Like the the the, the new on. the new uh whatever dropped, it's shit. like you gotta switch over. I can't it's, get it's a, with the shit. It's a very tricky thing because now it's yeah, like it's industry versus internet don't you kind of feel like that yeah, now in a sense. it's like a motherfucker may get casted because he has two million followers or you know yeah. like it's kind of weird certain, yeah in certain in certain situations mm -hmm. yeah but there's certain people that be like that i feel are genuinely talented that are on the internet and i feel like they deserve oh, a of course yeah but, but a lot you like, know a lot of those people work very hard yeah to, to get their stakes yeah. absolutely so it's like you know what i mean you built that audience you you worked hard at at what you, you mastered that internet shit and it opened the door for the industry. Who, mm -hmm. who, how can I be mad or feel like you you did less work than me? Your work, the work was just different work. You know, I won't say you did less work, you just did different work than me. You now, if, if times ever get rough, God forbid, are you ever going to be open to taking a regular job? Yeah. You think so? I don't got like I don't give a fuck. I take a break. Do you, I, mean, I got kids. I got a, yeah. I got a son. I got a daughter on the way in two months. Like nigga, mm -hmm. it ain't even about me. It's bigger than me and my pride. They gotta eat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, fuck that. If it, if it get if it get to that man, hey, sign me up. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna give me a regular a good regular job. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna try to go. Get, I'm not gonna go work at McDonald's. Of course not. I'm not gonna go work at goddamn. I'm not gonna be the clerk yeah, at Walmart. Yeah, you're gonna work. You know what for man? I'm not gonna be bagging nobody's groceries at Ralph's. Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna go get me a motherfucking job where I feel like yeah, I can go and I can make ends meet and make sure I'm good. And then shit, when shit back popping again, it will be back popping again. And now, do you uh do you feel a lot of pressure being famous or more well known facially, like, and then to keep up the status of the financials, like? I used to, I used to, but the older I've gotten and the more I've seen niggas, I've seen more niggas looking like they got it and not having it mm -hmm. than I've seen niggas looking like they got it and actually having it. Like, mm -hmm. Nick don't put on no jury let's time they tell them cameras rolling. Nick don't come in with no watch and seven chains on until it's time for us to say, action, wow, wild in, wild like mm -hmm. Nick come in that motherfucker with house shoes, Nike sweatsuit, and he got more money than everybody we work with. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of niggas who I see like that, like nigga, like, Niggas like uh Gilly the Kid, mm -hmm. Wallow, like them niggas ain't coming out. Them niggas is they got they getting that bag. Mm -hmm. them niggas not coming out just hella 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 flashy and mm -hmm. trying to look like they're not wearing their wealth. A lot of yeah. people aren't wearing. When I started learning and paying attention and certain things like that, it took a lot of people like, bro, I don't gotta. I don't. It ain't for what. I'm impressing a bunch of motherfuckers that ain't got ten percent of what I got. Yeah, yeah. For what? Like it don't make sense. Like just to show you, like look, I can buy, I can buy this shit and yeah. this. Big chain, it's Cuban link, and well, I feel like now, Bentley or like I mean, even uh, more so now though. I feel like it's not even it's it's a tri we're in a different age because back yeah. then it was about the flashiness, right? Yeah. Now it's like you you ain't gotta have flash, but if you have fifteen thousand followers, that's yeah. your new flash. Yeah, that's it's your a new weird. Like, yeah. It's the a clout, weird, the clout, the it's, clout yeah. is tricking people because there's so many people I even know that ain't got two cents to rub together, hmm. and but they they clowning it, and I'm like, yo, your bank account, whether you could put a roof over your head, For that's sure. really your reality, you For know. Sure. And I think it's hard to live in a reality when social media allows us to paint these images of happiness and progress and you've seen like people on social media they don't even have half the shit and they taking pictures next to the shit and 
the gas Taking station. Taking next to everybody else shit. And shit like, yeah, I seen it all. Yeah. I done seen it all. Like I said, and I learned so much. Like I said, that's why I'm, I'm thankful for my down years because it taught me so much. It built character. It built... It, it, it made me the man I am today to where I can stand before people and be like, bro, that shit don't make me. Like, mm -hmm. it don't. That shit don't mean a thing to me. I could be broke and I'm the same nigga. I could be up 100 million. I'm still going to be the same nigga. I'm still going to stop and roll and talk. To, I'm going to treat the, 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 the bum on the side of the highway just like I'm going to treat the, the boss at Viacom. How you doing? Good, God bless you. Mm -hmm. Much respect. Much love. I'm not going to treat nobody no differently. Everybody's equal to me. We all human. We all trying to figure this shit out. This thing called life, we're all trying to figure it out every day. That's, mm -hmm. that's the everyday that's the everyday struggle that everyone shares, trying to figure this life shit out. Yeah. Even the richest motherfucker still trying to navigate through this life shit. Because, yeah. like, you can have all the money in the world. Yo, yeah. yo, yo, a loved one dies and that all that money, you can't buy their life back. Yeah. You yeah. die, you can't go and be like, bank, take all my money and bring me back. Yeah. It 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 don't mean shit. It's just a piece of paper that they print up and they and 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 they add value to it, and and that value that they put on that piece of paper controls us, and that's crazy to me. It's like fuck that, that that shouldn't control you or your way of thinking, like, no. because that that dollar it's just how they saying like nigga the, the U S dollar about to be worth shit. No. Then what? When they say that motherfucker ain't worth nothing, what 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 does the nigga with a hundred million dollars do then? When they say that hundred million ain't worth a bitch ass thing no more. All you got is what you stand for. All you got is the principles, the 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 the, the way you made people feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The way you treated people. That's something that's gonna last. That's something like when you dead and gone, nobody gonna give a fuck about. Oh, that nigga died with a hundred million. And I'm like, bro, that nigga treat that nigga was a good person. That nigga treated everybody with respect. That nigga looked out for his people. Mm -hmm. He showed genuine love to people. He wasn't no arrogant asshole type of person. That'll people gonna remember. Yeah. Nobody remembers how much money motherfuckers like Prince and Mike had. That's not no. what we remember. What's remembered is the art that they left us, the the, the, the mark they made on people's mm -hmm. lives, and, yeah. and the impact they made on the culture. Like that's what remember. Yeah. That, the, the rest of that. It's shit funny because really I didn't even listen to Prince's music. Really, I was obviously later I, yeah, on. I about to say, yeah, but I will say though, the impact that he made on even the music industry, speaking up against, you know, like owning yourself. It was like, Absolutely. that's the legacy he left was Absolutely. like that brotherhood. And that. Absolutely. He taught, he, he, taught was of, us he, was, he was one of the first people teaching and preaching ownership. Yeah. And your yeah. art. And that was like, and look, we didn't even listen to his music, but guess what? We walked away with his principles. Right. For sure. So that's definitely true. What advice um, would you give to someone that is coming up in the game, hitting, hitting they heads. And then I have one more and then we out. Okay. Yeah, uh, if you coming up in this motherfucker, you you know what I mean. You you bumping your head, you slipping and falling. You can't get man. Listen, keep at it, keep at it. Everything's a learning experience. Trust God's timing and not your own timing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just 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 stick to it, man. Like nothing. Like you got people that that are overnight sensations, but guess what? They lose it overnight. Mm -hmm. Then you got people who work twenty years and they get that. Boom, they get that hit and they lit for the rest of their life. Everybody's story different. Everybody's journey different. Don't think because one person made it this way that that's your way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just stick to what works for you mm -hmm. and stick to doing what something. Do, do what you love. Don't do what you think is going to make you rich. Don't do what you think is going to make you famous and have you lit. Do something you love. You put some effort into something you love like and, and really push forward to do something you love. The money and shit like that going to come. That shit mm -hmm. gonna come. That shit's inevitable. They print that shit every day. Even on Sundays when the bank closed, they print that shit. Mm -hmm. You can always go get you some money, man. Mm -hmm. Do something you love. Don't be doing some shit you don't love and just doing it just for the money or just some shit that's just driven by you wanting to be rich or you wanting to be well known. Because it's not gonna you gonna get you gonna get the well known, you're gonna get the and then it's gonna be like, now what do I do with it? Now that I'm here, you're gonna be like, where's the what's the you know what I mean? Like, I have no knowledge of what to do with it and how to keep this shit and how to maintain this shit because I was only doing it to get this shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. so if, if you if you up and coming, man, keep at that shit and do it because you love it. Don't do it because you feel like you it's gonna it's gonna be the only way to survive. Like, don't yeah. don't don't base it off of survival, man. Base it off of love, bro. Um, speaking of survival, though, I really want to get into this part um, because I don't think it's talked about enough on one of the recent episodes that this, uh, someone touched on this. But I really want to highlight this part because because of the fugazis in the world, which is money in the industry, like one minute you're up, one minute you're down. Yeah. As a person that is riding the wave of the unknown, but believing in themselves. You're in this. You're in, you're already on the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. How are you managing your finances? Are you setting budgets and then just saying don't go over it? Are you doing reserves? Like, 
I want to get into that's that. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Setting budgets, uh, trying to make sure, okay, this is what this is what I need to spend on me. This is what for the responsibilities. This is, you know what I mean? I put this to the side because for my son, my daughter, or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm trying to just figure out, not really figure out, but that's where I'm at with just budgeting and the pecking order of what's the most important. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. You always do, you always do for you. Always take care of yourself. But mm-hmm. what's more important and what things and causes are bigger than you? My yeah, kids like are bigger than rent, me. Like, Kids, yeah, keeping this roof over my yeah. head, keeping my keeping my kids, make sure my kids is good. That's the biggest thing. So like, you you get those things and you you put that over here and in tier. That's like tier one. That's tier one. That's top tier. That's what's on top. And then you got tier two. Uh, you know what I mean? Groceries and making sure your house is filled with things that you need and necessities. And then you get to tier three. Like, okay, yeah, tennis shoes and shit like that. When it makes sense. Yeah. Don't just go out buying. Don't just go out on a five thousand dollars shoe shopping spree because you know you can afford to do it. Mm-hmm. Because at any given moment, that five thousand you just spent on on Michael Jordan shoes, Michael Jordan ain't gonna get you a dime of it back if you fucked up. Yeah, you can't call Michael like, look, Mike, I just bought every shoe this year, and now I can't pay my rent yeah. or I can't get my son nothing for Christmas. Can you uh, can you spot me five thousand and then you know I'm gonna buy some more shoes next year, Mike? Yeah, you can't do that, bro. So so that's where I'm at with like just budgeting and making sure like. Even though the account says this, that don't mean spend that. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. The account may say a hundred thousand, account may say eight, account may say twenty thousand, account may say a quarter million, whatever it say, that don't mean you gotta spend that. Figure out a, a figure out a way to keep most of that for yeah. a rainy day. Because I done seen a lot of rainy days. And a lot of my rainy days, because of poor money management, I had to call on others and be like, hey, help me out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And come on, bro, I'm like somebody be 30 years old. Ain't that shit ain't fly. Like that yeah. shit ain't fly, my nigga to be calling on number. Hey man, uh can you uh can you send me a thousand dollars until I can I can figure out something for the next week? Mm-hmm. Or you help me pay my rent. Like nah, bro, that shit ain't fly. No, that shit ain't cool. It's not. But hey, you see the growth, you see the learning lessons, you see the stability now. Absolutely. Now you ready for every next hurricane if it comes. Yeah. I've learned that like change is challenging, if, but it's you can embrace it. Yeah. Hard stuff is challenging. You can embrace it. And try your best to handle everything with love and grace. That's yeah. like my thing. Just love and grace, love and grace. The universe and grace. don't give you more than you can handle. Yeah. It just don't. God don't put more on you than you can handle. The universe, whatever you believe in, God, the universe, I believe in God. God mm-hmm. don't put more on me than I can handle. Yeah. So me knowing that, I face everything head on. If I, if I fuck up, all right, what am I going to learn from this fuck up? Because I can't unfuck up. Yeah. And I'm going to fuck up a million more times in life because life is a constant learning experience. Yeah. Like that's just how this shit goes. So it's like, don't get down on yourself. You fuck up. You make a wrong turn. Mm-hmm. Figure out how to get back to, to the road you was on and get back on the path you was headed in. Yeah. It ain't that hard. It takes. Yeah. It just you gotta want to for real. You gotta want to get back on the right path. You gotta want to do the right things. Like nigga, that's all it is. Like and once you once you really and truly and genuinely want that in mm-hmm. your life and want that for yourself, things gonna start happening for you to make it easier on you to stay on the correct path. Yeah. And that's where I'm at now because I make I make certain decisions differently. I do things a lot differently. So now life life is a little easier for me to stay on this path. It's not as it's not it's not as easy. It's easier for me to stay on the path than it is for me to veer off into some bullshit when it used to be reversed. Because I was so like, man, I was so eager. I mean, it was so easy to be like, man, fuck this shit. I'm just gonna go and mm-hmm. give me 20 pounds of weed and flip it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm gonna go get me this and do that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. not, that's where I was in. Like, bro, nah, when you tell yourself, like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to figure out some other ways and to stay on this path right here. Mm-hmm. Then it, it becomes easier when you really truly want to stay on that path. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. For sure. I agree. So where can everybody keep up with Bobby J. Thompson? Um, I'm on Instagram. I really don't. I'm not a big Twitter dude. I'm, I'm, you can catch me on Instagram. That's really my only. So like I said, I can't get jiggy with the social media shit to where I got seven different pages. TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook. Man. Instagram, man. I am underscore King Bobby J. It's Bobby spelled B-O-B-B-E. I am underscore King Bobby J. That's where you can keep uh, keep up with me. Everything as far as you know, what I mean, new episodes of Wild and Out, uh, new music dropping. Uh, I'm gonna drop an EP in February, so just 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 keep up with me, man. See me be a dad. Uh, I'm yeah. on there, man. I'm just that's where that's where you catch me at on Instagram. I, I show what I want to show, but you might catch some cool shit from time to time. I might catch my son. You know what I mean? Okay. You never know. All right, all right, guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of Eating While Broke. Yes. Peace out. Peace out. We ate them sandwiches too. No, we're busting. I ain't gonna lie to you.
my bro.